Hi everyone, welcome to my lore recap of the new questline from Season 5, Season of the Infernal Hordes. In my opinion, this is the best questline we've gotten from a season so far because it elegantly bridges the gap between the Diablo 4 campaign and the upcoming DLC Vessel of Hatred. This story gives us insight into what happened to the followers of Lilith after we destroyed her at the end of Diablo 4's campaign and how even though they do worship the daughter of Mephisto, they also care deeply about protecting Sanctuary against the forces of Hell. Lilith was always the mother of humanity after all. Let's get started. In the town of Zarbinzet, followers of Zacharum are searching for the tomb of Akarat. Amidst the bustling town, you encounter a tense situation. A soldier, Captain Sireska, confronts a man named Lokran, who wears tattered leather clothing with red accents, accusing him of praying to the Triune. You remember that the Triune, originally cultists worshipping the three prime evils during the Sin War, have shifted their focus to Lilith following her return to Sanctuary in Diablo 4. However, Lilith's death at your hands left a power vacuum within the Triune, leaving her followers leaderless. Captain Sereska expresses relief at your interest, of course, explaining that the Triune are notorious for bringing the tides of hell. Lokran insists he prays only for salvation, quoting a line from Rathma's prophecy. Recognizing this line, you question Lokran, revealing your knowledge of Rathma's prophecy. Rathma, of course, was Lilith's firstborn Nephilim and tutor to the first necromancer, and he foresaw a tumultuous future for Sanctuary. Lokran explains that the prophecy, recited by his mother before her death, gave their family hope. He invites you to his home southwest of town for further discussion. Intrigued and cautious, you accept the invitation. Upon arriving at Lokra's home, you are greeted by a woman named Istel, who recognizes you as the one who killed Lilith. Tensions rise, of course. You did massacre most of their brethren, to be fair. But Lokran calms the situation, revealing that they are part of the Mother's Triune, loyal to Lilith. Unlike many of their brethren who now follow Mephisto, Lokran and Istel seek to destroy these heretics and prevent Hell from overtaking Sanctuary, which was originally Lilith's vision. Lokran proposes an alliance, offering to share knowledge on how to find and crush the Triune heretics, even suggesting that you could harness their power. Skeptical yet curious, you contemplate the offer. Despite the mistrust and bloodshed between you, the rising threat of Hell necessitates unlikely alliances, which is a common theme in the Diablo franchise. You consider the weight of power and the cost of past actions, while Lokran emphasizes your shared goal of preserving Sanctuary from the demonic onslaught. Once you agree to find out more, Lokran and Istel begin a ritual to demonstrate the Mother's power, requiring a Kazra liver. You fetch the liver, and Istel ignites it with fire, summoning a demon. You battle and defeat the demon, but initially, no visible power is gained. Istel repeats the ritual with a larger demon. This time, after the demon's defeat, you received the Mother's Gift, a moat of focused hellfire. Holding it, you feel a surge of power, an awakening of your latent Nephilim heritage, tied to Lilith's blood ingested at the start of the Diablo 4 campaign. Now, what I mean by the Nephilim heritage, of course, is the fact that as the Nephilim ourself, we are, like all of humanity, half Inarius, half Lilith. So half angel, half demon. Lokran explains that this power, lethal to most, resonates with those who carry Lilith's blood. Now, do you remember the beginning of the Diablo 4 campaign where you are made to ingest her blood? You accept the gift despite lingering distrust. Lokran then details their plan to destroy the Triune heretics, starting with their leaders. He reveals his past attempt to kill you in Khaldum, which I found hilarious, emphasizing your unmatched strength, which even exceeded their expectations. You broke all his ribs. <laughs> Istel provides a crucial information on the movements of the Triune, aiding you in tracking down and eliminating their lieutenants. This endeavor enhances your power with each victory, consolidating the Mother's Gift. 
Istel even joins you on several missions, including an expedition to Mount Ciro. There, you discover the Burning Aether, an even greater source of power, the black abyssal core from which demons are reborn. Now, this is, of course, a way for the narrative to tie into the new mechanics of the season. Throughout these events, you remain cautious of Lokran and Istel's motives. They are triune, after all. Despite their help, you are wary of their ultimate allegiance to Lilith. Lokran acknowledges your doubts, recalling the devastation caused during the Sank of Khaldun and emphasizing the shared goal of preserving Sanctuary from Hell's invasions. Later on in the story, the town of Zarbinzet faces a sudden and fierce assault by the Triune heretics. You join the Crusaders of Zakarum to defend the town. Amidst the chaos, you discover Lokran strung up on a cross outside the town walls. He reveals that he had infiltrated a group of triune heretics and he was close to uncovering their plans when the crusader disrupted the mission. The triune heretics are excited about their impeding plans, indicating that the tides of hell are merely the beginning of a larger catastrophe. You free Lokran, who then guides you to the triune camp at Rakat Keep. Now, Rakat Keep is significant as it houses the black tomb of Sankakor. Sankakor was once a Zacharum leader who became the host for Mephisto before and during the events of Diablo II. After Mephisto's defeat, Sankakor's body continued to seep corruption, leading Karthus, a Zacharum paladin, to seal it within the depth of Rakat Keep to prevent the spread of Mephisto's influence. This site later became known as the Black Tomb. The Black Tomb holds further importance as it was used by the Haradrim and yourself to attune the Soul Stone that trapped Mephisto at the end of the Diablo IV campaign. Upon reaching the keep, you and Lokran find and quickly dispatch a camp of Triune heretics. Lokran explains that the veil between Sanctuary and Hell is particularly thin near the Black Tomb, which is why the Triune chose this location. As you search the camp, you uncover clues, indicating the Triune's intention to awaken Mephisto's essence, still trapped within Sankakor's corpse. A scrawled letter reveals that the Triune plan to use this essence to magnify the power of hatred and tear open the veil between Sanctuary and Hell. Lokrai clarifies that the veil is a primordial barrier separating the two realms, and while it usually prevents demons from crossing without invitation, it can be weakened. The notes you find confirm that the Triune aim to use Sankakur's body to break the barrier. To prevent this, you decide to destroy Sankakur's body yourself. You approach the entrance to the Black Tomb, only to find it sealed by a Horadric spell from a previous mission. Lokran, having retraced your steps, breaks the magic seal with knowledge imparted by Master Elias. It's always a good time when the game mentions Elias, in my opinion. With the seal broken, you enter the tomb, determined to thwart the Triune's plans and prevent Hell from overwhelming Sanctuary. You both descend into the dark chambers, with Lokran remarking on the Zacharum's inability to properly banish Sankakor's corrupted essence. So now your goal is clear. Purge the body of Sankakor and thwart the Triune's plans. The crypt is infested with demons, of course, drawn by the lingering power of Mephisto. You battle through waves of these infested creatures, pushing deeper into the tomb. Along the way, you collect various parts of Sankakur's body, each piece heavily guarded by a demonic force. You eventually manage to find all but Sankakur's eyes. Faced with this final obstacle, Lokran sacrifices one of his eyes, using it as a proxy to complete the ritual. With the body reassembled, Lokran begins the process of purging the body. Just as the ritual concludes, a demonic voice resonates through the chamber, signaling the arrival of Mayfer the Cruel. Mayfer, once a priest of Zacharum, corrupted by Mephisto, now serves as a harbinger of the Age of Hatred. He emerges from the depth, his presence overwhelming and filled with malevolent intent. You engage in a fierce battle with him. Despite the demon's strength, you prevail, defeating Mayfer and momentarily halting the train's scheme. Or so you think. Lokran, having completed the ritual and witnessed the demonic onslaught, realizes the dire state of Sanctuary. Even without Mephisto's direct influence, his legions continue to rise. Destroying the body of Sankakur just isn't enough. The veil between Hell and Sanctuary weakens further, and the Trion's efforts have already caused irreparable damage. As you survey the chamber, you find a stone inscribed with the names of the corrupted priest of Zakarum, Geleb, Mayfer, Brem, Wyand and Ismael. 
These are the five demon bosses you face this season. A quick note about these priests, just in case you're not aware. Originally, the Haradrim gave the priest of Zakarum a soul stone, which contained the essence and the soul of Mephisto. They were supposed to keep it safe, keep it secret. But of course, Mephisto being Mephisto, he corrupted slowly but surely the Zakarum church from inside. So this is where these guys are from. They are the original priests who were corrupted by Mephisto and eventually led to his release, which happens during Diablo 2. Outside the crypt, Lokran recovers from his wounds, reflecting on his vision of the realm of hatred. He realizes that Hell's conquest of Sanctuary is inevitable, unless drastic measures are taken. He proposes a desperate plan, enter Hell itself through the Hell Gate in Khaldum, and push back the demonic forces from within their own realm. This plan, while honestly risky and suicidal, might buy humanity some time to find another solution. You agree to the plan, understanding the urgency and gravity of the situation. You travel to Khaldum, a city marked by previous battles between the Church of Light and Lilith Triune, which you were a part of. In the Imperial Palace, you and Lokran prepare for your journey into Hell. Lokran recalls the prophecy of tears of blood raining upon a desert jewel, referencing the final battle in Khaldum. Together you descend to the Hellgate, a portal sealed by a Horadric spell at the end of the Diablo IV campaign by Lorath Nar. Lokran, using his knowledge of Horadric magic given to him by Elias, breaks the seal, allowing you entry into Hell, and conveniently the gate remains shut to others, ensuring your passage remains secure. Entering Hell, you face waves of demons, each battle more intense than the last, you fight tirelessly, pushing through the demonic hordes, each step taking you closer to the source of the invasion. The new goal is now clear, to reach the heart of Hell's invasion and halt the tide of demons pouring into Sanctuary. With Lokran by your side, you press on, knowing that your success could mean a brief respite for humanity and a chance to regroup against the inevitable onslaught of Mephisto and the Age of Hatred. Finally, you reach the core of the disturbance and come face to face with the corrupted priests of Zakarum, known as the Fell Council. These once holy men now serve as harbingers of Mephisto's will, their bodies twisted by dark magic. The battle against the Fell Council is fierce. Each priest wields powers that reflect their corrupted state, summoning demonic entities and casting powerful spells. You fight with relentless determination, using all the skills and strength gained from the Mother's Gift and the Burning Aether. Despite the overwhelming odds, you triumph, sending the corrupted priests back to their infernal corners. As the last of the Fell Council falls, their voices linger in the air, warning that the Age of Hatred is inevitable. This victory, though significant, is but a temporary reprieve. The forces of Hell are far from defeated, and the veil between the realms remains perilously thin. Amid the aftermath, Lokran's body writhes in pain as the dark energy consumes him. In his final moments, Lokran expresses his hope that your efforts will buy humanity some time. With his last breath, Lokran succumbs to the dark forces, his body turning to dust. You stand alone, reflecting on Lokran's sacrifice and the immense challenge that lies ahead. Despite the temporary victory, the battle against Hell's forces is, of course, far from over. You know that you must continue to fight, returning through the gates of Hell to push back the demons and protect Sanctuary, even if only for a brief moment of peace. And there you have it, the entire questline of Season 5 explained. I really enjoyed finding out more about Istel and Lokran. I haven't included all their dialogue in this video, but they have some interesting thoughts on the part they play in the story of Sanctuary and their worship of Lilith. They absolutely see themselves as the saviors of Sanctuary, and if Lilith is gone, whoever killed her is the best weapon against the forces of Hell. I encourage you to listen to their dialogue and invest yourselves in their story. It's worth it. Nice one, Diablo 4 narrative team. I'll see you in the next one.